Talk Talk. A bit of a different setup here today. We're in another corner of the room. And that's because today we're going to be working on some flight exercises. Good girl. I'm going to address this first because I'm going to get comments on it. Yes, there's no hair on the side of my head again. Shaved it all off yesterday. It is getting too hot and I need my hair to ventilate, all right? I like the... I like to be cool. So we're gonna go over three different exercises today, technically four, you can mix it up a little bit. They're gonna help strengthen your bird's flight. There's been a few questions lately on Instagram actually about birds who are a little bit clumsy with their flight, birds who are new to flying and trying to strengthen their flight. So I thought I'd do a quick little video on how to teach your birds a couple of exercises, all involving recall, so you only really have to teach them one thing, that can help strengthen their flight, that'll help teach them how to turn a little bit sharper, gain better control over the way that they move, make sure that they know how to slow down, that they know how to land properly, so that way your birds aren't just flying full speed ahead and crashing into things all over the place. All these exercises can be used for any sort of bird. It benefits anything from a budgie up to a macaw. Of course, if you do have larger birds, you will benefit from using longer distances than you would with a smaller bird. Just because of the amount of speed they're gonna be able to pick up, they will need a larger amount of space to be able to fully utilize it and learn to control their speed to their full capacity. But aside from that, and taking in mind that a bigger bird will need a bigger space to fly, these exercises can all be done really easily inside your own home. So before we hop into this, I just want to clarify that you do not need to overwork your bird. If your bird is panting when they are landing on you, if their flying is really inconsistent, really uneven, it's really wobbly and they're struggling to make it to you, you're asking too much of them and you need to move either in closer distances or practice for less time. It's going to take a long time for them to build up muscle, especially if you have a bird who was clipped when they were supposed to be fledging or your bird just got their wings back. The muscles that are attached to their keel bone are massive, massive muscles, and it's gonna take a lot of time for them to actually properly bulk them up and make those muscles as strong as they need to be to properly support flight. Flight requires a lot of strength, and it's gonna take time to build that. You can't just push it in a week and hope that they'll get there. The slower you take things, the more you let the muscles rest, the more success you're gonna have. So make sure you give your birds breaks. You don't only do it every other day if you have to. Don't do it every single day for an hour every day because your birds are just gonna get overworked and you're gonna end up hurting a muscle. Otherwise, these tools can be very, very helpful to help teach your birds how to land properly, how to slow down their flight so they're not just going one speed straight into a wall, and it's gonna help teach them how to see obstacles and process things while they're flying. So without further ado here, let's hop on into the exercises. So the first one we're gonna do here is actually gonna be the hardest, and this is what I tend to call just a 360. Basically what you're gonna do is recall your bird to start, give them a good basic exercise, and start to add a little bit of movement. Now you're not gonna go ahead and whip your hand all the way around in a 360 right off the hop. You need to just slightly move your hand, move it in a straight line backwards, and this is just to help your bird get used to looking at the thing they're landing on and acknowledging that it's going to move and them not to get afraid of it. The first time you move your hand when your bird goes to land on it, they're probably gonna turn and go somewhere else and go land somewhere that's more stable. And this is because they're trying to figure out where to land and they aren't used to landing on something that suddenly moves away from them. So you need to just recall your bird and gradually move your hand a little bit more each time until you're able to start moving your hand to the side and turning it around and having them reliably follow it. Eventually you're gonna hit a point where they're not panicking every time you move your hand and you'll see that they're a lot more confident in what they're doing and they're a lot more focused. What this is gonna help do is it's gonna help your bird learn to pay attention to their environment while they're flying. So now your bird isn't just flying from one totally stable stationary object to another, they're flying from the perch they feel stable on to a hand or to an object that is now going to be moving a little bit more. So they're learning to have to look and think while they're flying. And this is very important because when it comes to obstacles and things in their environment and people moving around, if they aren't used to somebody getting up and moving and they're in the middle of flying when you happen to stand up at the same time, they could crash into you, they could panic because all of a sudden there's things moving and they aren't used to anything moving. It's just a little kind of desensitization to help them get used to the idea of having to process their environment while they move around. Normally this is something that would develop naturally for a bird, but in captive environments where they aren't really exposed to things, and generally when you recall them, you're standing still, this isn't totally something they get used to. 
The other thing this is going to help with is general control because now Mia is having to watch my hand, she's having to move at the same pace as my hand, and she's having to turn in the same way. I would do this exact same process with her rotating the other way as well just to make sure that both sides are getting used to turning. But it's going to be very helpful because as they get better at it, you can move your hand closer and closer and closer to your body and get really nice tight U-turns showing that your bird's going to be able to quickly turn and spin around on a dime to help get away from things that are potentially hazardous that they weren't supposed to be around. It's also generally going to help your bird learn to control their speed, which is a really big problem for a lot of birds when they first start to fly, is they have like one default speed and they will just blast as fast as they can go because they don't understand how to fully slow themselves down yet. So by having to actively look for your hand, figure out where to land, they have to kind of slow themselves down and follow it, which is going to help teach them to gain some of that control and be a lot more stable when they're flying instead of just a chaotic disaster that's flying at full speed, trying to land on whatever thing is in front of it. For this next one, I'm just gonna grab a chair and I'm gonna use that as a training perch for today, just to show that you don't really need fancy equipment, just use the back of a chair. So this one's gonna work on our ascents, so your bird learning to fly upwards. This is a very important skill for a lot of birds because safety is in height, and the taller they are, the safer they're gonna be. If they're down on the floor and someone's gonna step on them, if they don't know how to fly up really quickly, they're gonna be in hazard's way and they're gonna be stuck on the ground and they're gonna get hurt. So this is a really good exercise because it helps them use a lot more power. It takes a significant amount of strength to fly straight up above your head. So by taking the time to start at a really shallow angle, get your bird to recall to you and slowly move closer and closer and put your hand up a little bit higher, they're gonna start learning to control those muscles a little bit better, to target for different sorts of perches that they can land on that are straight above their heads and things that might be a little trickier for them to get to. And this way they're just gonna have a little bit more control, they're learning to focus on certain targets and they're gaining a whack load of muscle because they're pulling their bodies straight up against the wind. The next one is the complete opposite, which is descents. And this is another important skill that many birds struggle with, especially if they were clipped at a young age. Flying straight down is scary, and a lot of birds fly up somewhere high and then they shut down because they're really, really high and they don't know how to get down. And they don't trust themselves to get down and it sucks. So you're gonna start at a really shallow slope and just slowly bring yourself closer, make that angle a little bit steeper until your bird gains a lot more comfort with going down. The other thing this is going to help with is their landings. Now birds tend to suck at landings, it's one of the trickiest parts to flying, and that's because they need to learn how to balance themselves, they need to target for something, and they need to learn how to slow down. And learning to slow down is hard. So by doing this, they're forcing themselves to have to focus on where they want to be, target that position, and flip themselves from being a downwards angle at you to being more parallel to the floor, bringing their wings out and putting a lot of force and pressure to really slow themselves so they can land properly. And you can see the difference between my two birds here. Mia has been flying for many more years than Newt and she has much better control over her descent. She moves a lot slower when she's coming down and she's a lot more focused. Newt's just kind of a big speedy disaster. I only practice maybe two or three times a week. It's not an everyday sort of thing. Just because you don't want to exhaust their muscles, you don't want to overwork them, you don't want to accidentally strain or sprain or, God forbid, tear anything in the process of teaching them how to use their muscles. Always pay very close attention to your bird's body language. Don't overwork them. If they're getting tired or they're panting or their flight is getting less and less controllable, stop your training because your bird is getting tired. I hope you guys benefited from some of the information here and I hope these exercises will help your birds be able to control their flight a little bit more predictably. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!